Hi everyone, Nima Romani, trial lawyer, Harvard Law grad, if you didn't know that already, and I'm here to talk to you about jury selection. Jury selection is probably the most boring and underrated part of a trial, but it's the most important. Picking the right jury will make or break your case, and it doesn't have to be a high profile political case like Donald Trump, but when he goes to trial, the makeup of the jury will probably decide whether he's convicted or not. There's a lot of people that think that Trump is being treated unfairly by our criminal justice system. And a lot of other people that think he's a criminal. And those two groups of people will be in the jury pool. So it's up to the defense and the prosecution to weed out people that are gonna vote against them. But this same rule applies to all sorts of cases. It doesn't have to be a highly political one. It can be a criminal case. There are a lot of people that think that criminals get away with it all the time and that just because someone's arrested and their case is brought to trial, they're probably guilty. And there's other people who think the opposite, that police are corrupt, they lie, and that the criminal justice system unfairly targets minorities, for instance. So you really want to identify jurors that come into that courtroom with preconceived notions because we know that even though jurors are supposed to decide the case solely on the law and the evidence in the case, they're ordinary people and it's impossible for them not to bring their experience into that courtroom and that trial. So how does jury selection work? It really should be called jury deselection because the parties aren't selecting jurors, they're actually selecting people who aren't on the jury. And there's really two rounds of what we call strikes. And a strike is when a juror is removed from the pool. So let's say, for instance, a case is going to have 12 jurors and maybe two alternates. A judge might bring in 45 or 60 jurors into the courtroom and start talking to them. And that process of jury selection is called voir dire. Voir dire is a Latin term for speak the truth. So usually the judge will start asking the questions first, really basic biographical information. Tell us a little about yourself, what you do for work, what your significant other does. Do you have any children? Have you served on a jury before? Do you know anyone involved in the case? Do you have any strong feelings about this type of case? Basically, the judge and the lawyers, they wanna get the jurors talking. And what the judge is looking for is someone who can't be fair. They're looking for someone who's biased against one party or another. And if so, the judge will remove that juror for cause. The important part of a for cause challenge is that the parties get unlimited removals for cause. If they can convince the judge that a juror is actually biased, that juror is gonna be gone and the parties don't have to use any of their strikes, which I'm gonna talk about later. So after the cause challenges are done and the jurors can be fair and impartial, each side gets a certain number of strikes for any reason, as long as it's not a constitutionally prohibited reason, which I'll talk about in a bit. So, if you're a party and you don't like a juror, you're gonna try to convince the judge to get him for cause. But if the judge doesn't agree, you are gonna strike that juror. Some states, in some cases, may have as many as 10 strikes. Some may have as few as three strikes. So you have to use your strikes judiciously because the last thing you want is to run out of strikes and then have a juror on the panel that you can't get rid of. So what will happen is after the cause challengers are done, then the parties will strike jurors. Now, the most important thing about the strikes, which also I'll call it peremptories, is that you cannot strike a juror for a reason like race. You can't strike all the black jurors, for instance, um, or all jurors of a particular religion. That is a constitutionally prohibited reason. But aside from that, as long as the race neutral or constitutionally neutral reason, you can get rid of as many jurors as you want, as long as you don't run out of strikes. So once the cause challenges are done, the peremptories are done, those jurors that remain become the jury pool. Now, in most cases, we'll have some jurors and some alternates, and there's two ways to do it. Sometimes the jurors know who the alternates are. So let's say, you, the judge is gonna have two alternates. There'll be 12 jurors and two alternates. Sometimes the alternates 
don't know who they are. So you might have 14 jurors, and at the end of the case, the judge will maybe draw straws or draw numbers to see who the two alternates are. That kind of keeps the alternates on their toes and to make sure they're paying attention. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.